Hey guys, this is Miss Arlequin, and in this video, we are going to be reviewing our lesson from the other day, which was how can we make plans for our extended response essay. So what we really want to do today is we want to look at different ways to actually plan for the extended response before we start writing. It's been proven by many, many research studies by educational experts that students who plan their essays before they actually start writing usually are more organized, have um, much more effective and stronger evidence, and don't suffer from as much writer's block as students who just kind of jump right in. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at different ways that you could actually plan for an extended response. So in class the other day, we talked about how there are a lot of ways to brainstorm and there's a lot of ways to plan the organization of your essay. One of the strategies we talked about was creating an outline. In your outline, you're not writing your actual essay. You are just very briefly with like bullet points, just kind of organizing what's going to go into each paragraph. You can also use a lot of different charts and maps. So we talked about using something like a flow map where you would put your topic sentences in the main boxes along the way. And then in the little boxes underneath it, you would kind of like the outline, just come up with some brief bullet point details um, of what's going to go into each section of the essay. We also talked about a flea map, how a flea map has a really great structure for organizing your essay. You start off with your thesis statement in the top box. Then in the middle, you have your body paragraph box where you kind of jot down what your topic sentence will be. And then on the tree map lines part of it, you're putting your details, and then the final box is your conclusion. How are you going to end it? In class, we also talked about how there are a whole bunch of different types of thinking maps we can use. And the one that we would use would really depend on what the essay is asking for. For example, if we were asked to look at cause and effect, then obviously one of our planning charts would be to create a cause and effect map, a.k.a. a multi-flow map. But if we were asked to do a comparison, then we would create a double bubble map. Now, the essay that we practiced in class was from the 2015 New York State exam for sixth graders, and it was the paired passage extended response for Wolf and that spot. We broke down the prompt. We talked about how paragraph one is always going to be our intro and that our final paragraph is always going to be our conclusion. We also took the bullet points and we organized them not only into paragraphs. So for example, the first bullet point is going to be paragraph two, um, our first body paragraph and so on. But we also talked about taking the bullet points and turning them into questions. That way, when we start writing our actual response, we could treat the body paragraphs kind of like a short response. So we can take the question that's going to go into that body paragraph and we can restate and answer it as a topic sentence for that paragraph. All right, and then what we did is we created a double bubble map comparing Wolf and Spot. And we made sure that our comparisons really focused on what the essay was asking about. So going back to the prompt, we're really focusing just on the challenges that Wolf faces, the challenges that Spot faces, and how they're similar to each other. And then for the second part of our response, we have to talk about the way these two dogs respond to their challenges. How do they deal with them? So we came up with some ideas. We talked about how Wolf, his brothers have died, and that is a challenge. But we also talked about how that's actually not similar to Spot. So it might not be the best challenge to write about in this essay. We talked about how both Wolf and that Spot are not loved by many, and that this was going to be the main challenge we would focus on. And then we looked at the individual dogs, and we talked about how Wolf responds to that challenge by guarding the palace, protecting the owners, and that he's basically working hard to earn the love of the people who are shunning him. We talked about how Spot is not loved by many people, especially his owners, and that he is constantly being sold, and the way he deals with that challenge is he always comes back. And when he comes back, he's actually often fighting with the other dogs. So his response is kind of just to be more aggressive. He's like, all right, you don't love me? That's fine. I'm just going to keep being me. All right, so now the second step. 
is, well, no, really not the second step. It would be the third step. Our first step is to break down the prompt. And our second step was to do our planning charts. So now this would really be the third step. And the third step is to go back into the passage and just label your evidence. Highlight or underline it. And when I say label, I mean find the part that you're going to include in your essay. So let's say, for example, I wanted to include this sentence right here. I would highlight or underline it or box it off like this, and then I would label it. So here, I'm going to put this in body paragraph number one. So I'm just going to label B1. It doesn't matter what you label it as long as you're able to read the label. The reason I like to label the evidence is because it's a time saver. There's really no reason for me on the planning page to go and recopy evidence that, again, the planning page is not going to be graded. It's just for me to organize my thoughts and come up with ideas. So if I was to recopy evidence onto the planning page, it would really be an example of working harder and not smarter. But just highlighting and underlining and labeling your evidence is a smarter way to work. That way, when I start drafting, all I have to do is go back into what I've already labeled and then just put it into the paragraphs as I'm writing. All right, so this was really just a quick review of our lesson from class. And I really just want you guys to remember that the most important idea is that you should be thinking, planning, brainstorming before you go right into writing. Again, the students who do that are way more successful during their writing process and their drafting than students who just jump right in.